How's everybody doing tonight? My name is John Gold. As I was explaining to people earlier, I'm just a regular Joe Schmo American concerned, a citizen, concerned citizen about the 9-11 attacks. Um, before I get started, I wanted to thank Betsy Metz for making all of these movies possible. Let's give her a round of applause. 9-11 Press for Truth, which is the movie you're about to see, is a movie that I actually have a little part to play in. Um, in sometime in 2005, I believe it was in during the summer of 2005, I called Kyle Hentz, who was the co-founder of 9-11 Citizens Watch, just to say hello. And he told me about a movie that he had been working on and that he needed money to finish it. I asked him what the premise of the movie was, and he told me that it was about the 9-11 families, uh, the Jersey girls, the women who fought for the creation of the 9-11 Commission, and it was based on Paul Thompson's The Complete 9-11 Timeline, which is available at www.historycommons.org. As soon as I heard that, by the way, that is an absolutely priceless tool for 9-11. If you want to research 9-11, go to History comments.org and look at the 9-11 timeline. When I heard that it was based on that and that it was based on the families, I, I knew right then and there that I had to do everything within my power to get him the money to be able to finish the movie. So I don't have any money. I'm a poor person. I asked my father, who has some money, to lend it to me. And so he did, and I gave it to them, and they were able to complete the film. And it was released on September 5th, 2006. Um, I believe it's one of the most important movies out there because I think that in order for people to start pushing for a new investigation, you must first show them that the investigation that we got was an absolute farce. And this movie does this better than any other. This also talks about the family members, the people who were affected the most by that day, um, and their struggle for the truth. And I, I think it's so important for them to get the justice that they seek. When I found out that we were lied to about 9-11, I was furious. I was absolutely livid. And then I thought about the family members who found out that we were lied to. Having lost someone on top of that, I can't imagine what they go through. So for me, it's very important. I think that they deserve better. So that's why it was one of the important reasons why I took part in this film. Now, one of the things I wanted to do tonight was just give you a little update on some of the things that are mentioned in this film. This film is going to talk about the fact that no planes were intercepted. Um, as it turns out, NORAD lied to us. They gave us three different timelines as to when you know, intercepts took place and so forth. The 9-11 Commission themselves uh, saw that the, the lies and even considered uh, referring it to the Justice Department for a criminal investigation. This took place after uh, this movie was released. Um, let's see, one of the other things, Philip Zelikow, somebody you're going to hear about tonight, he was in charge of the 9-11 Commission. He was the executive director of the 9-11 Commission. After the, uh, the movie came out, uh, Phil Sheenan wrote a book called The Commission. He was a New York Times reporter. In that book, he alleged that Philip Zelikow took direction from Karl Rove. This was supposed to be a nonpartisan or bipartisan, independent so-called commission, and yet the deputy White House chief of staff had a line in to, to Philip Zelikow, something he should not have had. Uh, he rewrote the 9-11 report to be more favorable of Condoleezza Rice. After the 9-11 Commission, Condoleezza Rice gave Philip Zelikow a job at the State Department. Um, he tried to insert a false link between Iraq and 9-11 into the 9-11 report, but he was rebuffed by the family members and the staffers of the 9-11 Commission. He tried, or he shied people away from the NSA. The NSA has hardly been investigated with regards to the 9-11 attacks. Um, he blocked 
Saudi investigators, staffers who were working on the 9-11 Commission, he blocked them from investigating the Saudi attacks. And I think he even fired one of them. Um, the, the, one of the most intriguing things, a complete outline of the final report was written by Philip Zelikow and Ernest May before the investigation even started. And they kept that outline a secret from the staffers um, of the 9-11 Commission. I wonder why they would want to do that. Government minders, uh, they're called government minders, intimidated witnesses before the 9-11 Commission. Um, you're going to hear about the head of the Pakistani ISI at the time of 9-11. His name was Lieutenant General Mahmoud Ahmed. And... It is alleged by a 9-11 whistleblower by the name of Sibel Edmonds that he took part in the nuclear black market. She testified before the 9-11 Commission for three and a half hours. So that's one time the 9-11 Commission was told about this person. They were also told about this person in the form of a question from the families about a $100,000 wire, trans $100, wire transfer that you're going to hear about in this movie. So that's two times. The 9-11 Commission was told about this person, and yet they didn't consider him to be a person of interest. 9-11 um, whistleblower Sibel Edmonds, the, someone the ACLU calls the most gagged person in American history. So, uh, John Ashcroft slapped the state secrets privilege on her. Um, you know, she, she, she went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court threw out her case. She's been slowly leaking things here and there. Uh, the London Times or the Sunday Times uh, covered a uh, part of her story in the beginning of 2008, but no American media outlet would pick it up. She recently disclosed that Osama bin Laden worked for elements within the U.S. government up until the day of 9-11. That contradicts, you know, the, the official story that any relationship that we had with Osama bin Laden during the Afghanistan-Russia war ended is a complete lie. So, you know, to me, uh, like B follows A, if Osama bin Laden was working for elements within the U.S. government up until the day of 9-11, then was he used or elements within his organization used for the 9-11 attacks? I think that's the next question, and I think that's part of the reason why she's the most gagged person in American history. Um, Another thing, one of, one of the things that I've researched a lot, Dick Cheney used the system between the CIA, the ISI, and terrorists to fund, train, and use terrorists for terrorist activities inside of Iran. Just look up the word Jundala. So that's a working relationship for the express purpose of using terrorists for terrorist purposes through the ISI, through a proxy. Um, this is all new information. This was reported by ABC News in 2007. It was further elaborated on by the Telegraph. And then recently, someone who was a part of Jundala said that, yes, the, the, uh, the, the United States helped to fund them to do what they were doing in Iran. So, those are all the updates I can think of for this movie. Um, I just want to say that the 9-11 attacks created the post-9-11 world. And as I was telling someone earlier, the post-9-11 world is a world where we lose our civil liberties, where we fight illegal, preemptive wars, okay? where executive power is multiplied by a thousand with no accountability whatsoever. Um, the corporations are making billions while the rest of the country is getting poor. Um, and I just have to say that if you expose the 9-11 cover-up, you can end the post-9-11 world and hopefully, hopefully bring this country back to what it was intended to be. So I thank everyone for coming out tonight, and I hope this movie moves you as it was intended to do. Thank you very much.